As millions of Americans head into a holiday weekend, right now at the White House, the president is making an historic decision. He is deciding if America will launch a strike on Syria, possibly within the next 48 hours. The U.N. weapons inspectors are pulling out of Syria by midday tomorrow, which clears the way. And the administration argued publicly today that Syria's president is a thug and a murderer, and his use of chemical weapons endangers not only the Syrian people, but the United States and the world. Still, a new poll says half of Americans wonder if a military strike will work or maybe even backfire. Team coverage tonight, the crisis in Syria, and we begin with ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz in Washington with what the White House says are reasons something must be done. In the Situation Room this morning, the president's national security team huddled to discuss options in Syria, and this afternoon, his secretary of state presented the most forceful case for a military strike to date. What we choose to do or not do matters in real ways to our own security. Some cite the risk of doing things, but we need to ask, what is the risk of doing nothing? Calling Syria's President Assad a thug and murderer who gassed his own people while they slept, Kerry laid out detailed human intelligence, satellite tracking that showed rocket trajectories, communications intercepts from a high-level Syrian official, and orders to Syrian troops. We know that the Syrian regime elements were told to prepare for the attack by putting on gas masks and taking precautions associated with chemical weapons. But it is the images and the stories from the survivors that are clearly the most compelling. And that number, 1,429. 1,429 people killed, including those 426 children. The American people are tired of war. Believe me, I am too. But fatigue does not absolve us of our responsibility. And history would judge us all extraordinarily harshly if we turned a blind eye to a dictator's wanton use of weapons of mass destruction. Within hours of Kerry's presentation, the president spoke, clearly concerned that the people at home, our allies abroad, and Congress fear yet another long-term conflict like Iraq or Afghanistan. We're not considering any open-ended uh, commitment. We're not considering any boots on the ground approach. While the president insists that this would not be an open-ended commitment, critics say it could very well be a chronic one. If the U.S. bombs Syria and Assad comes back in a few months and gasses more civilians, the U.S. would almost certainly have to go in again and take military action, Diane. So, Martha, what is the best the strike could hope to achieve? Well, I think to prevent and deter chemical weapons use for a while, for as long as possible. That's what they can hope for here. That's what they are trying to achieve. All right, Martha Raddatz, standing watch for us in Washington. And what about the Syrian response tonight? ABC's Terry Moran in the region for that. In Damascus today, even as U.S. leaders made their case for an attack, the civil war didn't stop. It didn't even pause, government artillery pounding away at rebel positions. The shelling hindered UN inspectors as they concluded their investigation. Elsewhere, people just went on with their lives. The lucky ones in cafes, others lining up for bread. But in the palace and the parliament, President Bashar Assad and his government remain defiant and well-fed. Syria won't surrender, declared the Speaker of Parliament, and now another atrocity. What's happened here almost defies words. The BBC's Ian Panel reported from the scene of what appeared to be an incendiary bomb attack, allegedly carried out by a Syrian Air Force jet on a school. They arrived like the walking dead. We don't know for sure what was in the bomb, but the injuries and debris suggest something like napalm or thermite. The shelling continues day and night, even amid reports that Syrian military bases are being emptied of tanks, missiles, even furniture ahead of the expected U.S.-led attack so the war can go on afterwards. Here in the Arab world, this crisis has strengthened Assad. He is seen to be defying the U.S. and Israel, and that, for millions of Arabs, 
is more important than the atrocities he's being blamed for. Diane? Thank you so much, Terry Moran. And now to remind you about the countries taking sides all around Syria, a nation of almost 21 million people. Here is the map. Iran, of course, is on Syria's side, and so is the faction Hezbollah in Lebanon. America's key allies are so close, right there, Jordan and notably Israel. So let's bring in military analyst, former combat pilot, ABC News contributor Steve Ganyard. Steve, what is the first sign our viewers will have that a strike is underway? Diane, I think what we're going to see is the kind of war that starts the same way it has for the past 20 years, where it's nighttime in a capital. You're going to see brilliant flashes of light, loud explosions as the tomahawks find their targets around Damascus. And any American forces imperiled at that moment? No, the president's made it quite clear that no U.S. military personnel will be in peril. These will be long-range cruise missiles from launched well out to sea in the Mediterranean. No U.S. personnel will be, lives will be in danger. And the targets themselves, they say limited targets over and over again. What does that mean to you? To me, I think what they'll do is they'll go after the unit that conducted these attacks on the civilians. They know who that unit is, they know where they can be located, and they will punish that unit with military strikes. But they'll also do something that's very visually compelling. Well, they'll level probably a Ministry of Defense building or something that's visually iconic, and they'll be able to show the world that the United States has conducted this military strike. Yes, they want to say to everyone, the U.S. was there, and Precisely. there is accountability. Okay, thank you so much, Steve. I know thank you'll you. be covering it all with us.